Hello, welcome to Showing Up with Pam, episode five. I am very excited today because I have a good friend of mine whose name is Debbie Mitchell, and I'm gonna go ahead and introduce you to her. Debbie is the founder and CEO of Recent Grad Launchpad, a coaching and human capital, human capital practice that works with young people at all stages of education and employment continuum, helping them find meaningful work that they love. She's got over two decades of experience in human resources, and she's had senior and executive level positions in many organizations, including Horseshoe Casinos, the American Red Cross, and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. She's a proud member of Nerd Nation. Debbie's a graduate of Stanford University in Palo Alto. At Stanford, she majored in urban studies with a focus in organizational behavior, which was also my focus. She also has a master's of science in communication from Northwestern University. Her volunteer service includes board positions with the Stanford Alumni Association, Boys and Girls Club of Northwest Indiana, Campfire Boys and Girls of Dallas, and volunteer work as a member of the Junior League of Dallas at the Shelton School, which I believe her daughter attends, and the Global Good Fund in Washington, DC. Her favorite gig, however, is as mom of Victoria. Welcome, Miss Debbie. Hello, hello, good to see you. Thank you for showing up. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I'm glad I made it. How are you? I'm good, I'm doing, doing well, all right. Thanks. Yeah. All right. So tell me who's been showing up for you. I know we're all going through different trials and tribulations. Oh my who's goodness. Who's standing in there for you? I feel so fortunate to have an army of people. Wow. Um, I feel like that are showing up, mm -hmm. especially this week. Um, so who's showing up for me? So my daughter, actually, oh. which is which is big for a 15 year old, right? Like she's 15. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say she's always there, mm -hmm. but when, when at the right time, uh -huh. my sweet baby girl will show up and be there for her mama. And then mm -hmm. it, she disappears back into teenage land. Um, I have a group of very close friends that I graduated um, from Stanford with. Mm -hmm. And they have been super supportive for years, but oh, especially okay. right now. Mm -hmm. And then um, I have a handful of other really close people in my life that have just, you know, they show me love and help me out in all sorts of ways, big and small. That is great. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. So when you sent me your bio and I got to read about your new venture, I think I wrote back in, in all caps, I love this. <laughs> so please, please, please tell me about it. Tell me how you got it started, kind of what the process is and so forth. Give me all that you can. Sure. So, you know, when I looked over my HR career and I mm -hmm. said, what did I love the most about it? Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things was the coaching and um, supporting and mm -hmm. uh, teaching part of the job. Right. And I had more and more friends whose kids are young adults, recent college graduates who finished school and didn't know what to do. They hadn't gotten a job before they graduated. Mm -hmm. And so they would call me or text me and say, hey, would you mind having a conversation um, with my child, mm -hmm. just talk to them about, you know, looking for a job or interviewing or any kind of tips you could get. Mm -hmm. And the more I did it, the more I really loved it. And I decided, you know, I could really spend some time and put some quality effort into this. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just started. I mean, I wish I had some magical formula and a big strategy. Mm -hmm. I did is me and taking my knowledge and experience and my just love for people and putting it to work. Wow, that is yeah. so cool. Okay, so we're gonna role play. I'm a, a high school, or actually, is it high school or, or, or graduate college? I've, I've only had a couple of high school people. Okay. Most of them are college within a couple, either just graduated or within a couple years, so college. Okay. 
So hi, Debbie, my name is Pam and I've just graduated and I'm majored in sociology and people have told me I'll never get a job with that. So I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be. What would, how would you help me? What, what, what kind of, how does the process work? So the process for me starts with just getting to know the person I'm working with a little okay. bit. Okay. And that is through, first of all, just an initial conversation. Mm -hmm. Tell me about you. Tell me about school. How'd you pick your major? Mm -hmm. What'd you love about it? What'd you hate about it? Mm -hmm. um, have you given any thought to what you'd like to do? Uh, because a lot of times I find that young people are kind of pointed in a direction or directed. Mm -hmm to go a specific way. Right. They aren't always asked what's important to them. Oh. What do they like? Oh. Okay. What do they think their gifts and talents are? Mm. Okay. And a lot of them haven't even considered that. They just said, I'm a sociology major, so I guess I'm supposed to be a sociologist. Or a social worker? I don't yep. Know. Exactly. Exactly. Anything that has the word social in the title. Mm -hmm. um, and so I first start to kind of get to know that person. Okay. Um, and kind of what they think their dreams are, where they see themselves. Um, and what I find is that, especially now, it's like we have given younger people this this marker of success of being having a certain number of followers on social media, usually in the millions. What? They have to make a lot of money really quickly mm. and they need to be an overnight success because that's what it looks like when you see all these people. What you never see is that they started mm -hmm. from the beginning you know, mm -hmm. kind of like what you are doing now, mm -hmm. they just started. Right. And it grew and it grew and they practiced and honed their craft. And then to you, it seems like they came out of nowhere, but they've been doing this mm -hmm. stuff for a long time. Okay. Or they had an amazing once in a lifetime opportunity, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so most of us don't have either of those two things. And um, I encourage them to realize that in these initial jobs, just right out of school, mm -hmm. they need to learn how to work. Like, mm -hmm. you got to show up every day on time. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Like, every day. Uh -huh. um, when you're given an assignment and a deadline, you mm -hmm. need to meet it. Mm -hmm. um, if you can't need it, you need to explain mm -hmm. what the challenges are so you can get help. Right. Um, just those basic work things that all of us who've been in the workplace for years and years, we already know, we do that in our sleep. Right. They don't know. They've never had to do that. Mm -hmm. Your early career is practicing to me. Yeah. It's like a paid internship. Right. I know for myself my early jobs, they ran the same calendar as the school year. I'd hold a job for nine months. And then I was like, I'm out. I need a new gig. And I give them another one. Nine months. I mean, like clockwork. I'm out. That was the school year, right? Oh you start goodness. in August or September. You mm -hmm. get out in May or June. That is nine months. And then you have a break. And then you go to the next adventure, the next school year. Mm -hmm. And... um you know, and when we were coming up, you held a job and you got to hold that job for five years and don't leave and be a soldier. And, mm. and that's not what it's like anymore. Mm -mm. But um, what I also know is from my early adventures in professional interning, I guess mm -hmm. I would call it. Yeah. Is that there came a point fairly quickly that those jobs didn't even really matter. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter all the things. And I i mean, those things don't show up on my resume. Mm -hmm. I worked on Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm. I worked for a convention and visitors bureau. 
Mm-hmm. I worked for a couple of them actually. Mm-hmm. I um, quit a couple jobs. I mean, mm-hmm. it was very tumultuous for right. my family, mm-hmm. but it was okay because it was great experience. Mm. So those are the kinds of lessons that I try to share with with um, my clients. Mm-hmm. I also have them do an assessment called um, Clifton Strengths. I was going to ask you about that. If you used any of those, you know, known ways of trying to figure out what your skills are, what you're good at. Okay, great. I, do. Mm-hmm. I love strengths, and I know everybody has different tools and different things that they love. Enneagram is really a hot thing right now. I just um, did that, by the way. I'd never heard of it before. Yeah. Thank you, um, Renee Brown, for teaching me about Enneagram. <laughs> I right? listen to the podcast. Uh-huh. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, We've done Myers-Briggs. You mm-hmm. usually end up doing that in college and stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. The reason that I love strengths is because it speaks in the language that we use every day. Right. And that other people speak as well. Mm-hmm. Right? So okay. for me... So not in this order, but like my top five strengths are empathy, I mean, adaptability, mm-hmm. empathy, individualization. Um, I'm not thinking of the other two right now, but that's okay. So if I say one of my top strengths, strengths is adaptability, mm-hmm. what does that say to you? It means that any situation you're put in, you will figure it out. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. If I go up to you in a, a, in a business setting or, or something and I say, well, I'm an Enneagram 9, I think is what I am. If you're not familiar with Enneagram, I know. you're a what? What what religion is, what, you know? People don't know. So I like strengths because especially for this audience, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's logical. You can say the words and people understand. Right. Uh, I mean, there's a lot more behind it. Right. But it just shows you not that you don't have all the strengths, mm-hmm. but that when you show up to a problem, to a class, to a relationship, mm-hmm. to a business function or networking, these are the things that you will naturally be drawn to. These okay. are your go-tos. Okay. 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 Doesn't mean like for me, one of my bottom ones is Mm -hmm. um, strategy, strategic. Hmm. Doesn't mean I'm I am not a strategic thinker, right? Or that I can't do strategy. Mm -hmm. It means that when faced with a problem, I'm going to go to the people part of it and the relational part of solving the problem and okay. find my way through it that way as mm-hmm. opposed to data sets and numbers and how they've done it before and how the biggest businesses do it, you know, just it's my approach. Oh, So that's okay. why I love strengths. It also gives you great ways to talk about yourself. A mm-hmm. lot of young people, well, a lot of people, that's aren't a good point. great at at telling what they're good at. Right. They haven't have to write a resume mm-hmm. or have an interview. Mm-hmm. They yeah. they can't. They struggle to say what they're good at, mm. and they struggle with. Well, why should I hire you? Why are you the right person for the job? Mm. And strengths kind of gives you that language and knowledge about yourself to say it very clearly. That is and awesome. It gives you power, it gives you power and confidence in your ability to do some things. You know, when I, I that, that the happiness class I'm taking, the science of well-being, we did mm-hmm. the, 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 oh yeah. My number one strength is humor. Oh, number one. I can see that though. But I'm like, surely I got something else going other than I'm funny. 
<laughs> but I love that. Doesn't mean you don't have any other ones, right? That's true. I love the way you, the language you use about how even if you have strategy at the bottom, it just means that when you're faced with something, your approach is different. It doesn't mean you're not good. You just go a different way. I'm so glad we're having this conversation. So now I'm going to go back and find my strengths and make sure I understand and get that language. Because I know even I think most people, Debbie, struggle with talking about themselves. They feel like, you know, we're supposed to have a level of humility and we're not even supposed to, you know, stand in any level of greatness or show our superpowers. You know, we're just supposed to, you know, even when you get a compliment, it's like, oh, no, I didn't do this, that or the other. And all we do is minimize everything. Exactly. You know, and 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 that's not what we are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be honest. Right. But it it makes the knowing and getting to the other person so much quicker and so much more honest Mm -hmm. when you can just say, hi, I'm Debbie, you know, here, here I am as part of this team. Mm -hmm. And if things go off the rails, I'm going to be the adaptable one to say, no problem people. Let's do this. Let's regroup and do that. Maybe we can look at it this way Uh where someone else adaptability, they'd be like, oh my gosh, the plan has changed. Things are falling apart. I don't know what to do. Right. That I I actually love it when things fall apart. Because then that's my opportunity to say, okay, let's gotcha. rebuild it this way. That is awesome. I love that. You've got me thinking about my strengths now. I wanted to, add, to follow up on something you said. I wrote down the word ghosting because I know you're dealing with young people and you know the way it's being portrayed in media is that, like you said, you get this job and you work it for a while, and you decide, you know, they're not valuing me enough, or for whatever reason, I don't want it, or maybe I get an offer for one job and I said I'd go to the other, and I just don't show up anymore. Do you ever talk to them about that, and and maybe the need to show up, quote, <laughs> and, yes. and make sure you know you're honoring your word and your level of integrity? Exactly. Yes, that is, you know. It's very interesting. And even some of my adult clients, like our peers Uh um, that I work with also, Mm -hmm. they'll come to me and say, I got this job offer, but I really want that one. And what do I do? Because that one's coming. And Mm -hmm. there's nothing that says you can't change your mind. Yeah. But there's a way to do it. Right. And your reputation will follow you. Mm, right. Absolutely. And people in the world are so much more connected now than they ever were. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. That if you get the reputation of, and they just left, mm. they ghosted me. Mm-hmm. And you go to the next place and that hiring manager realizes that their brother's neighbor's girlfriend was your other boss at the last opportunity or worked in HR that info travels super, super fast. Yes, ma'am. You have your own integrity, your own standards, right? Mm-hmm. That's true. Exception. I also wrote down how to be a team player because I know I was fortunate because I started sports young and that's all I've ever done. But I know in the workplace, there are folks who don't necessarily have that skill set and they don't know how to not want to be the center of attention or how to contribute in a group or whatever the case is. So how do you work with them or or find out if they need that kind of skill set and what kind of things do you do? Um, It becomes, you mean with my clients? Yes, with your clients. Yeah. With my clients. So it's very interesting how much you can learn about a person. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to them on the phone for an hour. Okay. Uh, The language that we choose when I ask, um, you know, the various coaching questions that I have, Mm -hmm. the thing that makes coaching um, good, it really is in the questions, right? Okay. And so you ask the right question or ask the question in a certain way Mm -hmm. and the person will open up and tell you a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And so the ability to listen and when they talk about challenges that they've had maybe with a college roommate or with a professor or at home with family or different things. You start to hear these uh, stories and 
you kind of piece together the problems are always outside of them. It's never their issue. It's somebody else's issue. Mm -hmm. um, everyone was against me. I tried to lead the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, being, being in charge is not always the best way to lead. Mm -hmm. But if you can lead from inside, mm -hmm. you can be that servant leader. Mm -hmm. That is a skill that I really try to emphasize as well. Um, because again, I don't think our young people are getting that message right now. The message is be the prettiest, be the best, be the most famous, be the wealthiest, but it's not be the kindest, be the most supportive, mm -hmm. be the best kind of friend you can be. Mm -hmm. So trying to put those little nuggets and trying not to be a parent, right? Like I do have to pull myself back sometimes. Okay, I'm not their mama. Yeah, I bet. I raised them. Let me just give a little perspective. I can uh, recall in some of my earlier jobs, um, there was a sense for some, and I probably did this a little bit, but I learned quickly to stop, is that you feel like um, you need to be the smartest person in the room and you need mm -hmm. to let everybody know you're the smartest person in the room. Mm -hmm. So uh, you find that you have, you're always speaking up about things and giving your opinion and stuff. And at, one of the things I've learned as I've matured is some of the smartest people in the room don't say anything. They just sit and observe. And when they feel like, okay, I've got something, now I'm gonna share. So that when you're not speaking all the time, people yeah. have a higher tendency to listen As because, oh my God, you're speaking. What do you say? <laughs> right, right. Do you, do you do any of that kind of coaching? You know, don't try to prove that you're no know, Superman or something, just kind of be a team player. I do. So what typically happens, you know, we first kind of got kids going on career direction mm -hmm. or things, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's not so much finding a new job or a first job, but it's I'm in a job and I'm kind of struggling. Okay. I have one client, um, that I had recently who his mom said, you know, I think he needs some help. And so she, it's interesting because he's the client, but she pays the bill. So, of course. which is fine. So, but she came to me and said, is this something that you would do? Mm -hmm. He seems to have a challenge with um, knowing how to speak up for himself mm -hmm. or knowing how to approach his boss or mm -hmm. HR when the challenge comes up. Mm -hmm. Sure, no problem. And so, yeah, one of the things I do is I coach people on how to navigate the workplace. Mm -hmm. Because getting the job is the first step. Right. But then keeping the job mm -hmm. is where the real work begins, right? Mm -hmm. And so helping young people understand that there is value in their opinion. Mm -hmm. But there's also a lot to learn. And sometimes the best thing you can do is listen and observe mm -hmm. and evaluate the environment that you're in and the culture. Organizations may say, we are super inclusive and everybody's voice matters. Mm -hmm. But when you sit in the room and you watch how things go, you can figure out quickly is that just what they said? Is that their marketing material? Right. Or is that really how it works here? Mm -hmm. So it helps to learn and listen and observe when you, at any stage, when you get to a workplace. And being the smartest person in the room, especially when you're the newest person in the room, right? unless somebody hired you because of your specific expertise in an area, right. you need to sit down and listen and watch. And learn. And learn. What about uh, dealing with conflict? You know, having someone, you know, say something about your ideas or just that kind of combative. Do you, do you try to give them? Cause you know, that happens all the time. <laughs> all, all the time. I, I used to get my feelings hurt all the time. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, you're like me, you're such a nice person and you're just, you know, you're only, only doing good, right? That's what yeah. you want. You want the best for everyone. I'm trying. <laughs> I do that lesson of not taking things so personally. Right. One of the my best people I've ever worked with. Mm -hmm. He is now an executive um, 
with a huge media company. Mm -hmm. But um, when I had the chance to work with him, one of the things that was his guiding principle Mm -hmm. that I heard him say over and over and over Mm -hmm. was assume positive intent. Ah. Assume positive intent. If you can navigate through the lens of they weren't trying to be dismissive or mean or ugly or short. Assume that that was not their attention and intention. And maybe there was something else going on. Mm. Right. And that other thing could have been, they were late for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. They have a sick kid. They have Mm -hmm. some personal uh, Mm -hmm. emergency. They don't feel good. They did not have breakfast. And they are hangry. Yeah. There are a million different things. If you assume positive intent, it's hard to then focus on, well, they're picking on me. They don't like me. No. Right. You know, it's interesting. I have to take that that out to my life every day. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, really? That's what you just said to me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Pull out a little positive intent here. You know, I was going to tell you one of the techniques and things we do um, in our scrum and our agile framework is there's something called a retrospective. And a lot of times, you know, if there's turmoil or or, uh, things aren't going well in a particular time, when we get to the end of a chunk of time, we talk about it and figure out how we can improve. And um, there's a bunch of retrospectives I've seen where you, you sort of set the stage and you say, okay, everyone here did everything they could to make sure we got the work done. We all tried to work together. And we assume that everyone did everything within their power and you sort of set the stage before you go in to start asking questions to see, you know, and then if you had a problem, say if I had a problem with you, it's, I'm not going to say, well, Debbie, blah, 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 blah. I would, you know, say I had some challenges with some of the team members, you know, at one point I may have said some things I didn't mean, or I, I, I think I let my temper get the best of me. You know, I apologize. I need to work on how we can communicate better versus you and me now having it out in front of the group right. setting. Um, right. So, yeah, I understand exactly what you're saying about the assuming positive intent. And I don't think I hit that till at least past 30, Debbie. Cause right. <laughs> oh, me either. Oh, no, I was older than that. I was well into my 40s. So I was like, yeah. wow, what a concept. That could have been useful a couple decades ago. They don't give you information when you're that young. They make you earn they don't. it. And that's what I try to do. I try to give a little bit of a leg up, mm-hmm. you know? That's great. What, um, tell me how about your family and how they're doing. I know we've talked a little bit. We both have parents who we're, we're, we're trying to help in any way we can. How are you doing and how are they doing? Yes. Yeah, so this whole situation of quarantine and, and all that has been stressful for everybody, I know. Right. Um, here in my little family, I have my teenage daughter, and then I have my mother who is in her early 80s, mm-hmm. and she has uh, dementia. Mm-hmm. She had been going to an adult daycare mm-hmm. a few days a week to mm-hmm. mental stimulation yep. and, and for me to have some time so I yep. can run my business. And right. as of March 11th, I have become the full-time babysitter, entertainer, mm. um, and senior care facilitator. Wow! In this house, so I would be lying if I said it was anything other than exhausting because it has been exhausting. Right. Um, the silver linings that I've been able to pull from it have been that um, I've gotten to spend some good time with my mom. Yeah. Like I have no idea. None of us have any idea how long we'll be here. Exactly. Right? Mm-hmm. So I feel like if something happens to her, mm-hmm. she and I have had some good time together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it, it can be a little maddening sometimes. I've had to flex those patience muscles mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. Same thing with a teenager. Mm. Um. But she's doing okay. Uh, Victoria survived homeschooling online. In some ways, it was good for her. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she, being in high school, I think it's hard now. There's a lot of pressure. Besides the academic pressure, yeah. just 
social interaction so, with so. people. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is a good break for her. She actually ended up missing the people she swore she never ever wanted to see again in her life before yeah. spring break. So that's a good thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and the dog, the dog's happy that we're all here all the time. She's Aww. getting fat and happy and lots of loves. That is How about good. you guys? How are um, you? You know, my dad, is, is, I believe, has some similar problems. We don't have an official diagnosis, but uh, my brother is actually helping to take care of him. He's staying with him. And, you know, it's interesting because, you know, we watch the news, so we see what's going on. And we understand we're not supposed to go anywhere. And so there are days my dad just wakes up and goes out and you can't stop him and he's going and that's it. And sometimes he'll go to the store and buy stuff we don't need. And I tell my brother, just take it back. And you know, he, my brother used to call me and then I would call him and we're, we're both trying to stop him from going and at least take your mask. And I mean, it was a battle. And about two weeks ago, I said, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. I told my brother, look, dad is strong-willed probably more than me. And if he wants to go out, all we have to do is do our best to make sure he at least takes a mask and he washes his hands. But you can't force an adult to right. do something they don't right. want to do. And I told my brother, you just need to let this go because whatever is happening is going to happen. So we yes. just have to pray and do our best. Yes. And you, what are you going to do? Hide the keys? I mean, what are you going to do? Right. Exactly. Yeah. And so in my situation, I'm fortunate. My mom hasn't driven for years and she's probably a lot more advanced in her her mm -hmm. um, disease than right. your dad right. is. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't put up a lot of fight, but she wants to go places. She right. hadn't left the house for literally six weeks wow. before I let her leave the house. Mm -hmm. And then it's mostly you can ride in the car, but you're not coming in. Right. You can ride in the car while I drop Victoria off or mm -hmm. pick up a prescription or whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, I know she misses people and she doesn't really understand. Yeah. She's like, now what's going on again? Yeah. What's this virus? Yeah. Don't we always have viruses? Yeah. Not like this. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. So. I understand. Well, I'm glad you guys are, are at least doing well. That's good to hear. Yeah. So a um, couple more questions for you. What gives you peace of mind these days? Oh, wow. This is a question for today. Mm -mm. <laughs> um, well, you know, in our, in our American political society right now and just the whole thing with George Floyd and just all of, all of it's tense in the world right now. Absolutely. And so what's bringing me peace? My dear friends who have reached out proactively to check on me. Mm -hmm. um, people who've said, I don't understand. Help me be better. Mm -hmm. That okay. brings me peace. Mm -hmm. Um. I've been doing a lot of walking because you can't go to the gym. Yes. Because mm -hmm. uh, I actually do go to the gym, whether it appears that way or not. <laughs> <laughs> I am not an Olympian, but I like to exercise every day. <laughs> How did I know that was coming? Okay. <laughs> Ooh, question to remove from. <laughs> But I've been taking lots of walks. Oh. And the beauty of that is, is noticing like how many birds mm -hmm. actually live in Dallas. I didn't even realize there were trees here. Right. Coming from the East Coast in Northern Virginia where there's so many trees. Mm -hmm. um, there are actually a lot of trees. And walking, seeing neighbors that I don't know because mm -hmm. live across the way, mm -hmm. but seeing them every day that they wave and we're happy to see each other and they recognize the dog and Aww. those things bring me peace. That's but good. I'll tell you the thing in the last three days and you will appreciate this. Okay. I found on the Stanford black alumni website. Okay. They had made this welcome 
to Stanford video for the class of 2024, the incoming freshman class. Okay. I stumbled upon it. I'm going to send it to you. Oh my goodness. But I have put that thing on repeat and watched it so many times because it reminded me Mm. of just the joy and the Uh energy and the, the promise of young people. Yeah. And that there's a whole world outside of this, Mm -hmm. this crazy time that we're living in right now. Absolutely. I don't know what it'll be, but there's joy out there. Absolutely. And when people have the opportunity to get back together, Mm -hmm. go back to school, just so much love. And I've loved it. I have loved seeing our campus and seeing Mm -hmm. the, uh, just the magnificence that comes out of athletes and, and the, all the talent, just fun. I'm gonna have to check it out. You will, I'm telling you, I love it. I've sent it to all these people. They're like, why did you send this to me? I don't know, it just makes me happy. <laughs> so uh, I wanna share with everyone um, how you and I met. I actually okay. used to work over in Plano uh, near Park and Preston in Texas. And I was in Whole Foods one day and I turned around and there was this lady and she had on a Stanford University sweatshirt and was brown. And I remember it stuck out to me because it reminded me of how when I was in school, they have their standard, the burgundy maroon color, and then they have blue and other colors. And there was this debate about whether it was okay to make it a different color because that's not the school color. So when I saw your sweatshirt, I thought, oh wow, a brown Stanford sweatshirt. So I turned around and I said, oh wow, did you go to Stanford? And you turned around and you said, Yes, I did. And I was like, really? And so it was just instant communication and connection. Right. We were talking, we exchanged numbers, and I've had lunch with you at that same Hold Foods a couple right. of times. Yeah. But um, I just want to thank you for showing up for me because you I don't know that you know how big of an impact you've had on me, Debbie. But when we used to talk and I would say how, you know, I want to get back to helping people. I want to do more motivational speaking. I want to see wh- how I can reach and kind of connect because I've sort of been in a, in a bubble and I've kept myself away from people and I haven't kind of shared stuff. And I remember we talked and we strategized about it and we tried to come up with ways I could do things. And so I remember, and, and the thing I love best about you, it seems like every idea I have, you are excited about it. You were like, yes, <laughs> that is great. <laughs> so. I truly appreciate your support and your encouragement. And I don't think you've ever said no about anything I said. You might have twisted it just a little bit, but um, you have really been there for me. And so that's one of the reasons why I wanted you on here to let you know that. And of course, to share what you're doing with everybody. So thank you. Oh, that's so nice. You're welcome. Well, it was funny because that day in the store, Mm -hmm. When you came up to me and you said, did I go to Stanford? I know in my head, I do this thing where I'm like, okay, why are they asking? Do they not believe that I could have gone to Stanford? Right? (laughs) Yes, I went to Stanford. With a little attitude. (laughs) Right? In my head. That's the uh, the God's honest truth at first. (sighs) And I looked at, and after we talked Mm -hmm. for those initial few minutes, I recognized you from campus because we were, we had one year overlap. Okay. And so I was like, oh yeah, I, I, I know who this is. Uh, I mean, I didn't know who you were, Mm -hmm. but I recognized the face, the beautiful face. And so, um, yeah, that was fun. That, and I, it wasn't that I believed that I said yes to everything just to make you feel good. Uh, it was really because I believed all those things that you said you wanted to do, you absolutely could do. And I mean, come on, if you're an Olympic athlete. I feel like there's some ability there to set some goals and achieve them. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't just some random off the street. I think the odds are pretty good. You're going to make it happen. The part that's up to you. Now, we know there are parts that are up to other people who shall remain nameless that still can't return a phone call, but I've let all that go. If somebody wants you to come and talk to their students, they will. Anyway, 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, and the fun thing for me that I don't know if your viewers know this, I had the chance, how long after we first met, maybe a year that I went and I heard you speak. Oh yes, at that um, meetup at Improve. Yes, at, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. And I just wanted to hear, I had been watching online and seeing your certifications and what you had done and mm -hmm. that you were putting yourself out there and your thoughts and your energy mm -hmm. more and more and more. And I was like, yes, this is what I love. And I wanted to go and hear and see. I remember you in the audience. I was like, what are you doing here? <laughs> and you were fantastic. I left going, oh my gosh. Not that I ever doubted your ability, but to see someone go from idea mm -hmm. to actually living mm -hmm. what they said they wanted to do Mm -hmm. And not just living it, but killing it while they're living it. I was like, I'm done. I love this. This is awesome. She's fantastic. Oh. And watching how people connected to you, mm -hmm. you were like the celebrity. It was, it's honestly, it's kind of funny because people get all like, I just want to go talk to her for a second. I'm like, move out the way because I need to say hi before I leave. <laughs> you don't know, Pam. I need to say goodbye to my friend. <laughs> oh my goodness. I remember that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and funny the the talk I talk about when I do kind of a motivational speaking, whatever, it's finding your voice. It's the fact that I didn't have it and now I found it. And you know, mm -hmm. I show them the pictures and they're I think they're looking at me like, well, how could someone like you lose their voice? It's like it, it happens, you know, you gotta everybody goes through stuff, you know. Amen. That right there yep. is the truth. Yep. And people don't want to admit it. Mm -mm. They don't want other people to know it. Mm -hmm. They don't want to feel like it's the end of their story. They lost their voice and now they're just going to go that. shrivel up somewhere. No. Yep. No. You've had, okay, lick your wounds or feel better, take a minute, and then get back out there. Right. Thank so. you. Dad. Thank you for all your support and encouragement. And you know, sometimes when you tell someone an idea, all you want to have them say is, okay, that I like it. It could work. That's it's like you just need that little nudge to keep going. Because if you hear, oh no, 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 you shouldn't do that, then there's a well, maybe, okay, maybe it's not a good idea. But when you get that little nudge, it's like you just go flying. Like, poof. I I, I emailed you about an idea today. I emailed you, Patty, and Curry about another idea. Oh, did you? So, okay, I have to look at my, my three musketeers. So um, yeah. I appreciate all your encouragement and support. Well, I and I wanted to to say to you that I, I just love how you are willing to pull people in and engage them and um, grow and go with it. And I think when you know, it's I what I found for myself is that when we have an idea, mm -hmm. it's just in that 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 infancy stage when it's still just a little baby idea mm -hmm. we have to be careful who we share that with it's true mm -hmm. because just like you said if you share it with somebody that you really respect and they say mm, nah you can't do that. no that's a bad idea that can crush you and, and kill it and you're done right they don't know yeah not everybody is deserving of your your dreams at the start. That's very true. You know, you got to hold on to that, grow it, find an ally or two who believe in you and believe in it mm -hmm. or believe in you enough that mm -hmm. they're not worried about what's going to happen. They just right. want to support you mm -hmm. and go with that because right. there are so many people who will say no and shut you down. Mm. You don't need that. True. This is true. Well, I've, I feel very blessed because I feel like right now I've got a circle around me and they have got me in a bubble and they are protecting me and they're just saying, go forth and conquer, Pam. What else you got? <laughs> right? <laughs> and exactly. I just love it. I just love it. Exactly. So thank you. You're welcome. All right, Miss Debbie, I'm gonna let you go now. Well, 
I thank you for this opportunity. It was it was fun. Thank you. All right, everybody. I'm going to end our broadcast now. Thank you for joining us. Okay, bye.